So now in this video, we're going to look at the integrated circuit here. That's a quad. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. Two inputs, so they can see A and B are the inputs. Uh, NAND, logic gate, so we'll come to that uh, coming up. And uh, it's the integrated circuit, as I said before. So that's the 7400 integrated circuit. I'm using the high-speed CMOS version. So a lot of these 7400 integrated circuits are really only intended for 5 volts. The uh, high-speed CMOS version, you do have more range of voltage. Uh, but uh, check with the data sheet for the range of whichever one you're using. To know what the output is going to do for a logic gate, you want to uh, check its true table. So we're looking at the NAND here. And if you know the AND logic gate true table, the output is the opposite here. So NAND means not AND or inverted AND. And uh, so the output's going to be the opposite of AND. Zero means close to zero volts. Doesn't have to be exactly zero volts. And a high means close to five volts. Doesn't have to be exactly five volts. The uh, outputs of the integrated circuits generally don't go all the way to the supply rail, uh, especially uh, high. But in any case, you can see that both inputs have to be high for the output to be low for the NAND gate. If any inputs are low, the output is high. Here is a schematic symbol for a NAND logic gate. So this is the AND logic gate right there. Plus it has this uh, little dot right there. They use these uh, dots to indicate an inverted signal. So that's a NOT AND right there. And we have the apart number that we're going to use there. A lot of times you'll see that recommended. And since there's four on there, we're going to use one out of four of them. We're going to use the uh, number one right there to uh, give our signal to the A input right there. We are just going to use a little jumper that I can toggle back and forth. We could also use a, a single pole double throw switch if we wanted to. That's what the schematic symbol is. I'm just going to use a jumper. We also got a trim pot here. I can adjust up to 5 volts or down to 0 volts anywhere in between. It'll be about that halfway point there where anything lower is a low input. Anything higher is a higher input. Again, we don't have to work with the exact voltages. When the output is low, right there, so basically it's connected to ground as good as it can, you can see that the blue LED will light up. When the output is high, it's connected as close to five volts as it can get, then we will have a current path through there, the red LED will light up. I have a one kilo ohm resistor protecting the blue LED because it's naturally brighter than the red LED. So we're going to put less current through it. Red LED, 220 ohm resistor. The outputs of this particular integrated circuit can handle 25 milliamps of current, either uh, sourcing it when it's high or sinking it when it's low. But uh, you want to keep the total current of the integrated circuit to no more than 50 milliamps right there. So if you're using all four of them, you'd want to go lower. We don't want to leave the inputs that we're not using floating with this uh, integrated circuit. So you can see we have them to a power supply rail right there. They don't let current in or out. They're just looking at the voltage. And uh, you have problems with the integrated circuit if you leave them floating. They pick up stray signals. And here you can see the actual component there with the uh, pin layout. We're using uh, A on top there, B right below it. We'll come to that. And then the output is right below that. The uh, inputs that we are not using there, we have tied directly to a supply rail. The outputs we can leave floating. That is not a problem at all. So there you can see A, we have a, a jumper right there. That is going, uh, right now it's to the positive supply, it doesn't really matter. That's the top pin, B right below it. We have going to the uh, trim pot right there. The uh, middle pin is the uh, wiper that slides across the resistive element. And then we have the two ends to the power supply and we have the power supply set to 5.1 volts. For the uh, blue LED, I'm actually going to swap where I have it in relationship to the resistor. Long lead the anode, we're gonna put to the positive supply there. We can go to pin one, uh, which is the uh, positive supply pin, and we're gonna take a one kilo ohm resistor, put that to the short lead, the cathode right there, and then go to the third pin down, the output of the particular NAND gate we are using there, 1000 ohm resistor. So now with the red LED again, we're gonna swap position with the resistors. Doesn't matter as long as the LED is facing the right way. Doesn't matter which one comes first. So 
any case, the uh, short lead, the cathode, we're going to put to that gray jumper that goes to ground. It's also one of the supply pins. Uh, right there the ground pin for the integrated circuit long lead the anode down one row the uh, short lead the cathode to the uh, gray jumper there we're going to take the 220 ohm resistor go to the output right there and then to the long lead the anode of the red LED since I didn't mention it earlier there you can see VCC for the positive supply and uh, there it's ground for the negative supply of a single supply power source which this integrated circuit is made to work with. So now I'm going to apply the power. You can see 5.1 volts, close enough to 5 volts right there. And right now the output is low. That tells us that one or the other or both of the inputs are high. As you can see, both of them are high right now. So we're gonna leave one floating now and there you can see the problem. It's bouncing back and forth between high or low. We wanna give it a definite high or low. So we have at least one low. So now the output is high. The red LED is lit up doesn't matter what we do here and now we'll go back to uh, this spot here and we have two highs for a low if I get this low now the output goes high so you can see that it is about the halfway point right there doesn't have to be exactly zero volts can be uh, higher than that for this particular integrated circuit it's the halfway point anything below and they were kind of hovering in the middle so you can't, it's not one exact spot, it's not a Schmidt trigger, but uh, it's good enough. So in any case, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out the links below. If you can donate, please do. That would help a lot, but I appreciate that you watch the videos. That helps a lot too. So thanks for that. I will see you in the next video.